This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you in part by Telex, the interconnection company, owners and operators of 56 Marietta, the most network-rich co-location facility in the southeast. Tag TV and Tag Radio. Technology now has a voice of innovation and information. Get it on www.tagtvonline.com. The TAG Education Collaborative, the only organization of its kind focused on the challenge presented by the future knowledge-based workforce shortage, bringing together the technology industry of Georgia in support of science, technology, engineering, and math educational initiatives across the state's academic and government organizations. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, August 25th, 2009, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mandela. Join us as John Hurlbuck, special guest host and education collaborative director for TAG, continues his month-long focus on both STEM's looming potential problems for workforce development and the exciting initiatives and organizations working to reach the STEM ultimate solution to economic and educational success. Today's Tech Talk, John introduces Lisa A. Rossbacher, president of Southern Polytechnic State University in Marietta, Georgia. President Rossbacher uh, it assumed her leadership role in 1998 after an illustrious career in geological and geophysical sciences with organizations such as the U.S. Geological Survey, NASA, a geothermal exploration company, and the National Public Radio, in addition to public and private institutions of higher education. President Rossberger is the first woman geologist to ever become a university president in North America. She has authored books of geology, science, and the media, and her bi-monthly column has appeared in the magazine GeoTimes, renamed Earth last year since 1998. Elected to Phi Beta Kappa as an undergraduate and to the status of fellow in the American Association for the Advancement of Science in 2001. This year's chairman of the Cobb Chamber of Commerce, active in the Marietta Kiwanis, and board member of the Georgia Chamber, President Lisa has chaired the United Way of Cobb campaign, served multiple terms as board chair of the Atlanta Regional uh, Commission for Higher Education, and served as chair of the Cobb YMC Board of Directors, YMCA Board of Directors. Dr. Rosenbacher has been awarded the Glass Ceiling Award from the Cobb Executive Women and the Liberty Bell Award from the Cobb County Bar. The Tech Talk focus on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math education in Georgia today and its impact on its economic prosperity for all Georgia's economy of tomorrow as John Hurlbut, Executive Director of the Education Collaborative for TAG, speaks with distinguished educator and long-recognized civic, community, and academic leader, President Lisa A. Rosbacher, Southern Polytechnic State University. Dr. Osbacher, thank you very much for visiting us today on Tech Talk. Thank you so much for having me. Lisa, uh, your background is uh, quite uh, diverse and very impressive, and there's no um, uh, surprise that you are leading Southern Polytechnic State University uh, as a special purpose institution. Uh, could you describe to us uh, what special purpose institution means? Absolutely. We're actually a comprehensive university, so we offer undergraduate and master's degree programs, but we have, have a unique mission in the state of Georgia to really fuse technology and science with the, uh, with the liberal arts. And so we have technology and science related programs that bring in some of those, those liberal arts skills like clear communication and good problem solving and teamwork. At the same time that we make sure that all of our traditional courses you would think of as traditionally in the liberal arts, they're all infused with some technology. We were founded originally in 1948 as a branch campus of Georgia Tech, but the institution was really founded as a result of the uh, request of business and industry in the state of Georgia to, to fundamentally to work with people who were returning from World War II who wanted to learn about science and technology and who wanted to get into the workforce rapidly. So we have always contributed for more than 60 years now to uh, science and technology in the workforce in the state of Georgia. Wow. Uh, how about your enrollment? I know um, things are uh, uh, they're 
struggles in different parts of uh, our economy and things of that nature now. How about your enrollments? What are they looking like these days? We are seeing really strong enrollment right now. This, this fall we're going to see the overall enrollment exceed 5,000 students for the first time in the school's history. So it's an all-time record high enrollment. And we think that has to do with a couple of different factors. One of them is that we have a, a number of new programs that I'll mention in a minute, and they're attracting new students. We've been doing a better job of marketing the programs we already have and really getting, getting the word out there about what we're doing in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We're doing a better job of retaining the students we have, and that, of course, increases enrollment too. Um, we're finding a number of ways that we can help the students who do come here be more successful so that they, they stay and succeed and eventually graduate. And we also see uh, something else happening with the current economy, that we're seeing people both return to school either because they're in transition in their jobs or they still have their jobs, but they're looking at ways to, to update their skills. And so we're seeing some economic impact there. In addition, because we're a state institution, we have very reasonable, um, it's a very reasonable cost for students who live in Georgia, especially for students who are eligible for the HOPE scholarship. So we're also seeing some increase associated with uh, transfer students, either coming from private institutions or from out of state institutions to take advantage of the great return on investment that Georgia public higher education can offer. I think you mentioned a little bit about uh, new academic programs. I guess with this kind of growth, you have to continue to grow your uh, programs as well. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, we have a number of different programs that have been um, initiated in the last year or so. One of them, just to give you an example, is political science. You, you might think, well, that's a pretty standard course that you'd expect to find at any college or university. but the um, but that particular major for us has to do with, uh, with math, with quantitative analysis, with polling, with statistical assessment of data within political science. So it's a little bit of a different twist that, that's right up our alley with, um, with the, the STEM focus. But we've also been adding a number of new programs in the, the technology area. For example, we've just added a new undergraduate program, a bachelor's program in computer game design, which we're discovering a huge amount of interest in among new students and among high school students who are just starting to think about where they might want to go. In addition, we have a new program in mechatronics engineering. Most people, when they hear that, say, what in the world is that? It's really robotics on steroids. That's how the faculty like to talk about it. It's, it's an interdisciplinary program that brings together um, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science to provide a holistic view of you know, how to approach robotics. That's really tapping into a lot of what, uh, a lot of the interest that high school students have right now in that whole area of robotics. So that's being, that, that's a, a real driver for some of our enrollment growth. And one that I can't tell you what the impact is yet, except that we're incredibly excited about it. We have just had approved here at Southern Polytechnic evening engineering programs in civil engineering, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. And it really augments what Georgia Tech is doing. They have those programs as daytime programs for traditional students. Southern Polytechnic is now just beginning to offer those as evening programs really targeted at non-traditional students, students who may have a full-time job and want to earn an engineering degree without having to quit work and go to school full-time. So it's a, it's a niche that had not been served. We've worked very closely with Georgia Tech in developing our new program, and we're very excited about being able to, to offer that. We, we did a demand study with Georgia Tech that showed a tremendous interest in evening engineering programs from both um, potential students from employees and from employers in the Atlanta area. So we really see that as another way in which we can contribute to, to the economic growth and the economic strength of the Atlanta area. That's very impressive, uh, it, you know, developing a complete menu for anybody who, uh, at, at different, or for folks at different stages of their, their life, if you will, to be able to have this opportunity to get an engineering degree. That's very impressive. 
I understand that you also have a strong reputation for graduating African-American engineers. Um, along those lines, is Southern Polytechnic engaged in outreach efforts? Uh, if so, what are some examples of this? We're engaged in a number of outreach efforts. One thing that is very clear is that it's not enough to wait until students are about to graduate from high school to try to attract them into the, the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. We have to go much earlier into their educational background and, and reach much earlier in the pipeline. We do a number of things with Girl Scouts. There was an event this summer that had about 100 Girl Scouts on campus for, for uh, most of a week learning about computers and about technology. Southern Polytechnic has been very actively engaged in a number of the, the robotics competitions that are aimed at middle school and high school students to try and get them more engaged in the STEM fields. Uh, our campus here in Marietta is the Georgia hub for BEST Robotics. That's the acronym for Boosting Engineering Science and Technology. And we have been a co-sponsor of the first robotics competition since that first came to the state of Georgia a number of years ago. We're very proud to be collaborating with, um, working with the TAG Education Collaborative to sponsor Future Cities as another way to engage young people in science and technology and we hope spark their interest and their motivation to, uh, to ultimately want to study those fields. We hope here, but if not here, somewhere else to, to pursue that direction as a, as a career option. That's great. Uh, looking into the uh, future, uh, um, how is Southern Polytechnic investing in the future of technology in Georgia? One of the ways in which we're doing that is working to develop a new education program focused specifically on the STEM fields. Obviously, there's a certain amount of self-interest in our doing that because that's the pipeline from which our, our future students will come. But it's, it's reaching sort of all the way back to the very beginning of the pipeline, affecting the teachers who will then affect the students throughout their academic career. This is something we've, we've wanted to do for a number of years, and we've gotten the go-ahead from the Board of Regents of the University System to, to develop a proposal for a standalone education program here at Southern Polytechnic that will focus on um, people who understand science, technology, engineering, math, and who want to become teachers. And I think that, that we're, we're fairly unique in focusing on that particular aspect of education. A lot of education programs come the teaching route and then layer in some of the, the content areas. We're focused on taking people who understand and, and are, are skilled in and interested in those STEM fields and helping them develop the skills to become outstanding teachers. And we really see that as a strong investment in the state of Georgia, in the economy, in the future of technology here, and also in the future of this institution because those teachers will teach the students who ultimately are interested in the programs that we have here at Southern Polytechnic. I believe also one of the things that you're um, certainly aware of as uh, uh, the leader of a, of a fine institution is that you can't do it all alone. And um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, technical colleges, I, I uh, certainly believe, have a strong play in Georgia. And I know that just recently, I think you have uh, spearheaded a collaboration with technical colleges in Georgia. Can you tell me a little bit about that? We have been doing that, and we're we're very excited about that uh, cooperation. We have been working with all of the technical colleges in the state of Georgia that are currently regionally accredited, and I think there are about 22 of those. And we've developed an, a, a comprehensive agreement with them so that a student who attends one of, the technical, one of those technical colleges and takes a particular curriculum there will be able to transfer after they've earned their associate's degree at the technical college. They'll be able to transfer to Southern Polytechnic with virtually no loss of their credits and be able to continue their, their educational program and earn a Bachelor of Applied Science from Southern Polytechnic. Right now we've got five different programs, at least one in each of the, uh, the academic schools that we have here, that will allow students who start in a technical college to have as smooth a transition as possible to a university system of Georgia institution where they can earn a bachelor's degree and 
presumably go on and do other things as well. There has historically been, even though we've talked about working together and talked about how we want that to be a seamless transition, there have been a lot of structural issues that have made that more difficult for people who start in the technical college system to then transfer to the university system and earn the bachelor's degrees, earn the four-year degree. And we have figured out a way to, to make that as smooth a transition as possible. And frankly, we think that there's no place that makes more sense than Southern Polytechnic as kind of the senior institution to work with those, work with the technical colleges. We can really build on the, the education that students receive there. And we can really, I think, strengthen their opportunities to earn the bachelor's degree to streamline it and to really make the most of their educational experience. We had a really exciting event this last summer where we had sort of the master signing of the articulation agreement between Southern Polytechnic and the technical college system. And we've gotten tremendously positive support from, from, from the presidents, from the students at the technical colleges. So. You can probably tell we're pretty excited about that. <laughs> I can see that. And it's great to know that late bloomers like myself still have an opportunity to uh, move on with their, their <laughs> education should they decide to do so. Uh, I have one final question for you, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Southern Polytechnic has a long history in STEM fields. What do you see um, is in the future? Well, in the near future, we're going to see the development of our evening engineering programs, which I think will... Um, will get a lot of attention and make, make engineering education, enge, excuse me, education available to a whole population of people who are interested in the state of Georgia but who haven't had access to it in the past. Um, the future is also, we hope, going to bring the education program for people who want to become teachers in the STEM fields. The future is going to bring further development of this articulation agreement with, uh, with the technical colleges. And because much of those, a lot of those programs are going to be done online, it's going to enable people to, to pursue bachelor's degrees at Southern Polytechnic in a variety of fields with very either low or no residency requirement. And that has profound possibilities for expanding the opportunities in the STEM fields throughout the state, including to rural areas, because the agreement with the technical colleges will not require people to quit their jobs or uproot their families and, and move to Marietta. They will be able to, to finish their degrees with maybe a few trips to Marietta or will figure out ways to provide some laboratory experiences closer to where they live. But for the most part, this is going to be accessible to people across the state. And we think that has huge potential benefit to, um, to some rural areas, to some areas that may be underserved by higher education right now. And you know, the sky's the limit for where that can go. We're very excited about it here at Southern Polytechnic. Well, as well you should be. Uh, you should be proud of uh, your accomplishments uh, to date. And I really appreciate your time today, Dr. Rosbacher, to put uh, um, um, to explain to us a lot about how you've put Southern Polytechnic State University uh, on the map. So thank you very much, and I, I wish you all the best. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the chance to talk to you today. Okay, have a good day. You too.